witches, it's Taya, and today I want to talk a little bit about um, a tool that I had never heard of until I got into traditional witchcraft, um, and that is the witch's stang. Um, it was first named as a stang by Robert Cochran, although there are lots of depictions in the folklore in, um, right, in previous documents, etc., that show like a bifurcated, pronged staff. There are lots of other names in other cultures for that type of a tool, but the name Stang itself was sort of given to this tool by Robert Cochran. What is it? It's basically a pronged ritual staff. Um, it is traditionally shod with iron, whether that's, you know, you, sometimes you have, you see them with like a whole iron cap on the bottom or driving like a nail up into the base of it. And that's used to ground the energy. And sometimes it's decorated with different carvings and such. Sometimes it's left just plain. Typically it's made of um, a sacred wood. Um, I would suggest whatever sacred or well used in your area, um, often ash or oak are used. And at its base function, a stang is used to direct energy. So you can use it to like lay your compass so you would drag it around the outside of your compass while you're sort of projecting energy down through it. Or um, you could use it for calling spirits, for casting spells. It's very similar to how you would use a wand. Um, it also acts as an altar, which makes it really cool. And we'll get into sort of how you set it up as an altar, but it's as an altar, it's portable. Because if you're going to go for a walk in the woods, I can take my stang with me. It's just like a walking stick. Right, I'm not gonna carry my altar or I'm out there trying to find just the right rock or spot to like set it up. If you have your stang with you, um, that will act as your altar. So the stang is basically a representation of the witch father in traditional witchcraft. The two tines, like you'll see at the top, right, is the two prongs, are similar to like the horns of the horned god. Um, often you'll see a candle placed between the two tines, which is a representation of like the light betwixt the horns. Um, and it really just represents the knowledge that's imparted by the witch father. As an altar itself, it can be um, adorned with like garland, foliage. Um, sometimes you'll see people hang arrows or um, they'll actually hang a whole skull, like a, like a ram's skull right on it. Um, it's also... Um, you can figuratively climb it during your um, during your ritual, your sacred space. Um, if it's set sort of in the center and as a world tree, it's representative of the world tree. So you can figuratively climb that. I wouldn't literally climb it, but you can, you know, in your mind, you can climb it to reach the upper or the underworlds. Um, it's also figuratively ridden to perform astral travel or flying out or going to the witch's Sabbath, whatever you want to call it. Um, right. So often people will lay on the floor and hold it for that, or they can play, you can play like lay on the floor, but place it between your legs to kind of get that feeling of riding. Um, what else can I tell you about a stang? So if you're going to use it as an altar, it's typically placed either in the North of your circle or in the center. Um, just sort of depending on your tradition where you want to focus. And like I said, you can adorn it. And what you would do is you place your other working tools around the base of the stang. If you are working indoors, and quite often even when I'm outdoors, I like to use like a stang holder because I can't drive it into the ground in the middle of right an indoor working space. And outside of my yard, I don't necessarily want to dig a hole to anchor it in. So um, I use uh, like, it's probably about this big. It's like a tall aluminum plant pot. I filled the bottom with rocks. I put a paper towel tube in the middle and then filled it all with um, soil around the outside. And these are all like rocks and soil from my yard, from my local, right? Kind of bringing in the spirits of, of my place. And in the summer, I actually sometimes will plant in the top, right? We'll do some planting around the top so it will actually have like growth coming out of my stang holder. And you can use that indoors or outdoors, whatever sort of whatever your jam is. Um, so yeah, so this is my Stang. I love it. Um, I have to kind of, it's quite tall. Mine's is a little taller than what you would usually find. The reason being is that when I hold it, let's see if I can do this. It's got this little, th it's the perfect handle. 
So when I'm walking, it's exactly the right height to be my handle. But as you can see, it's just forked on the top. I've actually started doing some carving. So I have actually put in a little, um, an eye carving. And as I walk, that actually points out behind me. Um, what else can I tell you about mine here? I have no idea what wood it is. Um, mine is very connected to a very special place, somewhere that I have been going every summer since I was a very small child. And last summer I went on a, a pilgrimage. I went on a walk with the intention of finding myself my staying. And sure enough, there it was. I honestly have no idea what kind of wood this is. It might be birch, it might be ash, it might be aspen, I'm not sure. Um, and anyways, it, I found it and it has been my staying ever since. So to me, it's more connected to a place than a particular type of, of wood. Um, but it brings in those energies of that familiarity, that, that comfortable space. It's like going home again and all of that energy is sort of imbued in this staying for me. And I'm going to add more carvings as we go along. Um, to mark different milestones. So I had a recent dedication that I'm going to go and add on to here. Um, dedications, initiations, any significant workings that you've done with your staying, right? You can always sort of acknowledge those as almost like tattoos, right? But you're carving them onto your staying. Uh, you can add runes, you can add decorations for protection, for power, for energy, all that kind of stuff. So eventually this will all be carved and fancy one day when it's been well used and well loved. Um, I have not shod it yet. It does not yet have its iron in the base. Um, I am going to follow a really awesome ritual I found in Gemma Gary's The Devil's Dozen. And there's a section on hallowing, shodding, and raising the stang. And um, it has a whole kind of ritual outlined in there that I'm going to be doing probably in the next month or two to go ahead and get this all sort of shod and consecrated and up to speed. I do use it anyways, but I would like to officially sort of welcome it into my practice. So I will be doing that. And then once that's done, I'll be marking that date on the shaft of my stang. And you can go ahead and like, if you want, you can leave the bark on, you can peel the bark off, all kinds of things. So I've gone and I've sort of, you can see where I've sanded down all the different areas. If we go to the bottom, you can see there is still um, lichen on here that I will leave on some bark. I really like the texture down at the base. You see how it widens at the base. Whoop, there we go. Um, and yeah, so I'll probably smooth out that end piece and shot it with, um, with an iron nail. And we'll just bang that right up in the middle. So that is my witch's stang. It is probably one of my favorite, favorite tools. And uh, I'm really glad I got to share it with you guys. Uh, do you have a stang? Do you use anything like that? Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you're working with. Um, any questions? Yeah, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, just thanks so much for subscribing. I really appreciate those of you who have. Um, I'm really excited by the growth on the channel and I can't wait to keep sharing with you. So we'll see you again in the next video. Mwah! Thanks so much, you guys. <laughs>